Get ready to ignite your Azure knowledge with another electrifying episode of Potrix Tech Lightning. In this episode, we're diving headfirst into the Microsoft Enterprise Scale Landing Zone, ESLZ, with an exciting update for 2023 and a comprehensive deep dive. Think you know it all? I'll first put your knowledge to the test with a quiz to uncover any gaps and get you primed for the deep dive into the Enterprise Scale Landing Zone. You can skip the quiz by moving directly to the deep dive by using the video chapters below. Let's jump straight into the action. Here we go. We're starting with the quiz to assess your knowledge. Get ready for the first question. What is a landing zone? This is an interesting question as a terminology landing zone is used in many instances. In big lines, an Azure landing zone, it enables application workload to land in the public cloud. There are different types of landing zones depending on your requirements. What two types of landing zones are there? In Azure, we refer to two types of landing zones. There are the platform landing zone, which contains shared components and are used by all the subscriptions in the environment. In addition to these, we have the application landing zones, which are there for specific application workloads. Can you elaborate and give me one example of a platform landing zone? Certainly. As I stated, there are there for the shared components. A common architecture to deploy is a hub and spoke model. The hub is a separate subscription. In this case, is considered a platform landing zone. You would put the connectivity to on-premise through either VPN or express route. You would also set up an Azure firewall for all the traffic to traverse. A DNS server with Azure Private DNS can also be located here, along with a shared application gateway. What is the Microsoft best practice for application landing zone setups? Microsoft actually recommends setting up one subscription per application. You would then normally pair it to the hub, also known as the connectivity subscription, which is one of the several platform landing zones. You are saying that if an enterprise has 300 applications, there should be 300 subscriptions, correct? Yes, that's the best practice for Microsoft. Are there any exceptions to this rule? As I stated, these are the best practices, but may not be suitable for each customer. You have to take into account that certain services have to be set up in each subscriptions and cannot be shared. When you create a subscription per application, you may also increase the cost. A thorough analysis has to be done before making the final design. Is there any difference between a test and a sandbox subscription? Yes, a test subscription usually contains a replica of the production environment. This way you can develop and test new features before moving them up the chain, which will eventually hit production. In other words, it's there to verify that the change rule will work in production. Sandbox subscriptions, on the other hand, are primarily for isolated environments where you want to test and experiment with new solutions. These were the preparation questions for the deep dive session. I'll now go through and explain the enterprise scale landing zone. Before we deep dive into the actual enterprise scale landing zone, we need to have an understanding of certain concepts. The first and most obvious one is, of course, the, the Azure landing zone. The terminology landing zone is probably very overused, meaning that it can be somehow vague. Overall, we can say that the landing zone is an environment for hosting your workload. There are different landing zones in Azure, which are further divided into separate subscriptions. Primarily, there are two types of landing zones. We have the platform landing zones. These are there to provide a centralized service which can be used by all the infrastructure in Azure. Mainly, this is where you put your networking components, a central firewall, identity components such as Active Directory, and anything which will benefit from centralization. Then we have the application landing zones. These are considered one or more subscriptions deployed to host an actual application. This is where you would put the application-specific resources, such as virtual machines, Azure App Services, and more. Microsoft's best practices, they state, to set up one subscription per application. The next concept we have is the Microsoft Cloud Adoption Framework, CAF. This is a detailed guidance of practices, tools, and methodologies to implement businesses and technological strategies for the enterprises. It guides you through the start of the journey with the business drivers on how to successfully end up in the end in Azure. 
Thirdly, we have the Microsoft Enterprise Scale Landing Zone, ESL set. This is a set of best practices on how to architect and set up your Azure Landing Zone. It shows you best practices with regards to management groups, policies, and subscriptions to ensure that your environment that you set up is scalable and modular. Now, where does the Enterprise Scale Landing Zone fit in the big picture? Remember, we have the Microsoft Cloud Adoption Framework. There's a phase in this framework called Ready. Now, this phase guides you through the process on how to set up a landing zone and how it's created. That's exactly where the Enterprise Scale Landing Zones falls into place. Let's zoom into this by bringing up the framework as created by Microsoft. Now, the big picture here might seem as daunting as a surprise visit from your mother-in-law. But just like her, it's nothing to be afraid of. In fact, it's actually there to lend a helping hand. The top part belongs to the Azure tenant. Azure Active Director, of course, while the bottom part are the parts that belong to the Azure Landing Zones. First, we will look at the management groups here. That's where you usually set up policies and role-based access control RBAC for the Azure subscriptions. As you can see, there's a whole structure on how to set them up, which allows for unparalleled flexibility. However, in this video, I will more focus on the subscription setup. The Enterprise Scale Landing Zone from Microsoft, they recommend following the following setup for the subscriptions. For the platform landing zones, remember, these are subscriptions providing a centralized service. We have the connectivity subscription. This is usually the hub subscription in a hub and spoke deployment. This is where we would deploy and provision the Azure Firewall, connectivity to on-premise using VPN or Express Route, and configure Azure DNS, to name a few of the most common services here. To the left, we would have a separate platform landing zone as a management subscription. This is where you would put all your automation accounts for change tracking, inventory, and update management. Virtual machines uh, deployed in the application landing zones, the spokes in your environment, will be using these ones. In addition, it will serve as a central place for Azure Log Analytics workspace where all logs will be stored centrally. We also have the Identity Subscription. Again, a dedicated subscription primarily to host, for example, Windows Active Directory domain services, if required, of course. Let's now look at the application landing zones. These are defined here and are the spokes in the Azure deployment. Strictly following the Microsoft best practices, each application should have their own separate spoke subscription. All Azure resources for one application, such as virtual machines, app services, function apps, should all be deployed there. There is a pairing connection from the spoke to the central hub connectivity subscription. This is to allow connectivity to other spokes and to on-premise. We also have another type of subscriptions, the sandbox ones. These are usually isolated environments with a focus on testing and learning without production data. As you can see, there's no pairing between these ones and the connectivity subscription. What about the dev and test environments? Well, these ones don't fall into the sandbox as they're there to actually test and develop new features which are to be pushed in the production environment. Dev and test are usually split up in different subscriptions and also fall under the application landing zones. They may have limited access to production data with connectivity to on-premise for functionality testing. Let's summarize what we have learned in uh, some key points. The enterprise scale landing zone is part of the cloud adoption framework. It's there to ensure that you have a scalable and modular environment, meaning Following the guidelines allows you to set up governance and subscriptions in a way to ensure that you do not run into any limits where you have to redesign your setup afterwards. Platform landing zones, they're there for central services. Application landing zones are for applications. Microsoft, they recommend one subscription per application. And yes, many large enterprises have hundreds of subscriptions. Emphasize here lies on the word recommends. Some services such as Key Vault with HSM are very expensive. 
depending on which service you use in Azure, there are limitations where you cannot store them centrally. Creating HSM Key Vault in each subscription can be very expensive. I've just given you a whirlwind tour of the Enterprise Scale Landing Zone. Not only is this knowledge impressive, but it can be also highly practical in an enterprise world. In reality, the Enterprise Scale Landing Zone is designed with large enterprise companies in mind. For smaller customers, however, it's worth considering it as a set of best practices and perhaps opting for a more tailored approach with fewer subscriptions. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time, take care. Goodbye.